Hi everyone, Kevin here. Let's talk about Worksheet 28. There was a lot in there. Let's break it down and talk about how best to study for the final exam. Much of Worksheet 28 was simply a review of Lecture 28, but there were two areas that were particularly challenging. One of them is shown here on this slide. So this question encompassed lots of topics that we have covered so far. So it encompassed operons. So be sure you understand how operons work. We talked about that in lab and in lecture. In the lab manual, see question seven or, or page seven dash 18 and make sure you understand how operons work, especially the Arabinos operon that's covered in this question and that it, we used in our DNA technology project. This problem also considers mutations and DNA mutations that gave rise to changes in proteins. So listed on this problem are mutations in proteins. For example, proline 8 was changed to arginine in this example I'm circling here. So we had DNA mutations that gave rise to changes in proteins. So you have to understand transcription and translation. Okay, so that, that topic was also encompassed in this question. The third thing that we covered here really was protein, prote were protein-protein interactions and intermolecular forces. Okay, so remember that when a mutation happens in an enzyme, uh, in a protein rather, that'll change the conformation of the protein and that impa impacts binding. So remember, conformation changes lead to changes in binding and vice versa. So in this problem, we're interested in why the arabinose regulatory protein no longer needs to be bound by arabinose in order to get fluorescence in the cell. And that was shown by this particular mutant that we looked at where arabinose, with or without arabinose, the fluorescence was 25,000. So the mutations made a change in the conformation which looks like pre prevented the regulatory protein from binding to the operator and stopping transcription. So make sure you understand that. The second major topic in this worksheet had to do with our DNA project. And so there's a lot going on there. So we considered polymerase chain reaction, PCR, in this problem. So understanding how that works and how we use that to introduce a restriction site. So PCR um, is described on page se pages 7-6, 7-13 to 15, and 7-24 in the lab manual. So make sure you're clear on how, how PCR works. This also encompassed the idea of primers that are used in PCR. So make sure you understand primers in PCR and the introduction of the restriction site by the use of a primer, all right? That leads to the third topic, which is restriction sites and enzymes. So understand those two and the difference between them and how enzymes, restriction enzymes recognize restriction sites and that's where they do their cutting. So see page 7-26 for more of that. And then finally, this, in, this whole area in uh, this, this DNA project uh, includes three things that we added to the media that help us understand what kind what results we had and the three things we added were ampicillin x gal and arabinose okay remember it's going to be important on the final to know each of these and how they uh, are important to the process so page 7-17 discusses ampicillin and how that selects for cells which have taken up a plasmid 7-17 also talks about XGAL, 
and the fact that when we have our intact LACZ gene, it produces the beta-galactosidase enzyme, which cleaves XGAL, and that's what leads to a blue colony. And then finally, arabinose is discussed on page 8-17. When we add arabinose, we turn on the arabinose operon, and that allows us to express GFP. So these two questions on the worksheet were difficult because they encompass lots of problems. On the final, there won't be as much overlap of, of multiple topics on one question. So you can expect that they'll be a little more contained on the final. However, it's important to know all of these topics covered in these two questions. Thanks for watching this little how to study video. Good luck studying for the final.